I was beginning to think that Jehovah's Witnesses going out in service was going to start to be detrimental to the Watchtower Society because we live in the internet age, right? So you got a household householder, somebody who lives in a home, who is going about their day, going to work, not thinking about Jehovah's Witnesses. It's just not something that's in their head, right? So they don't know to research Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, but then you have a Jehovah's Witness come to their door, knock on their door, say, hi, we're Jehovah's Witnesses, we're here to share Bible scripture with you, and <clears throat> Blah blah blah. Encourage family Bible. Encourage, encourage family Bible. Yeah, reading, right? and we're encouraging you. So now the witness is putting Jehovah's Witnesses in that householder's mind, and so that householder closes the door, walks upstairs to their computer or grabs their phone, and Google's Jehovah's Witnesses. Wow. What are they going to find? Child abuse, shunning court case after court case after court case that the Watchtower Society has lost because of their um, because of their uh, hiding child abusers within the organization. Um, the shunning practices, the destruction of families, they're going to find uh, all sorts of apostate uh, JW ex Jehovah's Witness videos. So the householder did not have that in their mind before Jehovah's Witnesses came to their door. So I always thought this is just going down a path that's going to be very detrimental to the organization. Um, but you know, we live in, in uh, the age of information, so there's there's no no hiding anything anymore, anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And like a, a Dr. Romani, I like Dr. Romani. If you have an opportunity, what, what's nice about the information that I accessed. When I access information, it had to be very neutral. I couldn't, I couldn't listen to Lloyd. He was difficult for me to listen to because sometimes it was just to Jehovah's Witnesses, and I, like me. and I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that. Yeah. I I didn't want to hear that. Winston, well, he was not really, uh, you know, he wasn't Christian enough. I mean, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses have this thing mm -hmm. where you can only listen to Christian stuff and that would only be JW Broadcasting. So I couldn't access information that wasn't not neutral enough. And so like uh, The Body Keeps Score or um, Mr. Douglas, Frederick Douglas, that was information that allowed me to have a totally n neutral historical view of life. Dr. Romani, she had nothing to do with cult. She didn't. She didn't deal with the cult stuff. Um, she just dealt with um, uh, relationships. And so I thought, okay, I can do relationships. I can do history. I could do, um, you know, just uh, psychology. And I had been to psychologists enough to know there were certain things that I didn't like about psychology. Um, along with uh, the 12 step programs. There were certain things I knew that I saw my dad go through with a 12 step program that I didn't really care for. And as I continued to learn about uh, the history of religion and where it got its, where it got its start and how it kind of just twisted itself to wherever we were in history, they twisted themselves to be what the people wanted or how to manipulate other people's minds. I got I got books that would allow me to see those things and and I could get a really neutral and have neutral information given to me and then I could make the decisions based on that. It it felt easier to listen to, it felt easier to to assimilate cuz uh, I would quietly listen to it or I would read it and we would discuss it. And he had, a, the discussions were always pretty neutral. And so that helped a lot in our situation. I hope I'm clarifying myself enough because I'm kind of like going all over, but it really helped to be able to have something absolutely neutral. I couldn't listen to anything else. Yeah, and online now on YouTube, there are some really, really good resources that are not Jehovah's Witness related, but when you watch them, you can't help but think Jehovah's Witnesses do this too. And some of those sources are genetically modified skeptic, 
is a really good former Christian who mm -hmm. is now an atheist. I like that flip, that young man. Yeah, and he's really articulate. And yes. the quality of his information is flawless. Right. And, um, and it's very <clears throat> neutral. I yeah. like that. And very, um, very balanced and he's very kind right about, his presentation yeah his presentation is very kind and loving very and so um and then there's cosmic skeptic and then of course a little more harsh <laughs> but but gets to the point <laughs> is um i couldn't watch these ones is no, uh, now i can richard dawkins sam harris oh those were cool and um christopher hitchens what's the cartoon ones they used to watch oh yeah um Dark Matter 2525. Oh, I couldn't watch that. But there's a lot of cussing, oh. but it's funny as hell. Mm -hmm. But anyway, start your mate off with, your believing mate off with... Neutral. Neutral. I would really recommend watching Genetically Modified Skeptic. Mm. Um, because he really goes into the history of Christianity and how Christianity and other religions, Judaism... Islam manipulate their members and you cannot help you cannot help as a thinking human being with a brain at all to see the similarities between these religions and Jehovah's Witnesses and these these are seeds that you're planting and remember you're always planting seeds um, yeah. that the people cannot they cannot um, on here you you're in a judicial you're in like a like a judicial type of uh, arena yeah. where you can say what you want and you know just say it but try not to be too I, I know that when we started to get emotional about it mm -hmm. we couldn't hear it anyway yeah. So if you can, if you can just say it without getting too riled up about it, just say it. So watch these videos. Genetically modified skeptic is a really good one. Um, the cosmic skeptic, he's really good too. Um, but also ask questions in a very calm manner, and and these questions seem to help Ina. I would, I would tell her how many times. Um, Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormonism, Mormon movement, <clears throat> was taken to court for fraud, right? And this was the founder of this Mormon religion. And then I pointed out to her how many times Charles Taze Russell was brought to court for fraud, right? He was brought to court for fraud uh, yeah. because he sold miracle wheat for a lot more money than normal wheat was sold, sold at that time and a farmer brought him to court because a farmer had this wheat analyzed and it was the exact same wheat as the wheat that was uh, much less expensive. Charles Taze Russell lost that case. Charles Taze Russell was brought to court um, because he claimed that he uh, spoke Greek and could translate Greek. Yeah. And on the stand, he was asked to translate Greek, and he couldn't do it. He lost that. This man was a liar. Then Charles Taze Russell was brought to court, divorce court, by his own wife for having oh. an inappropriate relationship with a neighbor girl, an underage neighbor girl named Rose Ball. Mm -hmm. And he lost that, yeah. right? This was the founder of this religion, the founder of Mormonism, brought to court because of fraud and losing. So a Jehovah's Witness is gonna say, of course, yeah, this is fraud, right? Because this is this is not the true religion. Well, the founder of the Jehovah's Witness was brought to court several times and lost mm -hmm. for fraud, for having a relationship with an underage child, an underage girl, and lost. His, his wife won the divorce. But what's the difference? The reaction when he would tell me these things, though, when I was deep in, wasn't oh oh epiphany, right? It wasn't like that. Mm -mm. It was, it was defending. I would always defend it. I would always say, well, that was then, and this is now, and and this is 
basically new light and now we know what Jehovah wants. And now we know that Jehovah disliked that. And we know that, you know, he he died and we got new men involved. But the problem is it was founded on lies. Mm -hmm. So when you found, find, when you found something on lies, mm -hmm. the foundation, even in the scriptures, we know, if you don't put your foundation on something solid and you put it on sand, it falls apart. In one of Jesus' own um, <clears throat> illustrations was the tree that had rotten roots. Um, you couldn't save it. You just tear it down and throw it away, right? So all of these religions are founded on rotten roots, right? Because these are just manipulative people that are trying to get your money, service, money your volunteer service, your loyalty. Free slavery. Uh, free slavery, right? So mankind has, has still got slavery going on. They just found a different way to do it. Do it, yeah. So, but these things do plant seeds in your loved one's mind. Yeah, Whether you it think does. or not, even though they're defending it, they're thinking about it. I promise you they are thinking about it. Yeah, I couldn't unhear it. Mm -mm, you couldn't unhear and it. And my husband was very kind and would um, help my girls, you know. So <laughs> they would go to the Kingdom Mall and they would sit there and my girls were very, all of my family, I have to say, was very respectful. They were very respectful to their crazy Jehovah's Witness mom. And I look back now and I think, oh my goodness, I'm so very grateful that they were so respectful <clears throat> in the process. <clears throat> and it seems very slow. And it seems like, I'm sure that it seemed like I wasn't listening. And like my husband said, he just kind of said, okay, I give up. Um, she's going to live and die one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And that's it. And so maybe some people will live and die just Jehovah's Witnesses. But I'm here to tell you I was that person. So don't give up. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Because I was that person. Combating Cult Mind Control. Such a good book. I'm like in the second chapter of it. Stephen Hassan. Now, like I said, it wouldn't have worked for me because we didn't have a group of people to come and say, hey, this is wrong. Ina, come on, pay attention. Look at what you're doing. Look at the choices that you're making. No, but he, there are a lot of similarities between the Moonies and Jehovah's Witnesses. Believe it or not, the kingdom is one of them. Um, picking people that only know about this particular kingdom and that we you have to go through those people in order for the kingdom to come and to make good decisions the interesting thing about the moonies is they have ties to washington the washington times and different things that i think jehovah's witnesses are involved in but somehow we don't know yet and it'll come out later and that's if you know for hardcore jehovah's witnesses there's no it's hard you know you're gonna have to shed a lot of the pride that comes from being one of jehovah's witnesses um i was very prideful and i needed to shed that in order for you to shed that you have to have a different mindset and like i told my husband you know we would have compassion and empathy to a certain point for people you would have compassion and empathy to a certain point and then they weren't qualified enough to have more compassion and empathy and that's not how jesus was he was very empathetic according to the scriptures he was very empathetic to people and uh to a certain group of people he would help uh, his people and he saw that they were, uh, you know, skinned and thrown about. So there was a, there's a certain portion of your empathy and your kindnesses that, and it stops as a Jehovah's witness because we can't, the world is uh, in under Satan's control. And I think, uh, encouraging the public to recognize who is coming to their door. Some of the, 
the uh, they should be more careful about who they listen to because you don't really understand if this person is um, a perpetrator or not that is walking and knocking on your door. I think the more people talk about it, I know I talk about it now a lot more than ever before with individuals that I meet. I ask them how many times they read the Bible or do you know? I mean, there's just certain things that people just accept and they don't even realize they're accepting it. And, and that is scary when you can have somebody come to your door with a Bible and just all read, just accept them without any question. Oh, the, do you know how many times I've, I come, have come to somebody's door? Oh, you're doing such a good work. Okay. It, you know, what do you, what, do you know what I'm doing? Cause basically you're going to die. You are going to, you're telling me this, but I'm telling you, but I wouldn't say it. You're going to die in Armageddon if you don't do what I say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really, am I doing a good work? Am I? Cause I don't think so. That's not a good work. If they knew the details of what you were telling them, mm -mm. they wouldn't say you were doing a good, good work. So people's concept of God is, is, is ignorance. <clears throat> um, they just, because of the human race and what we've, we've, the pedestal that we've put this imaginary creature on God, um, they, they relate God with goodness and love and kindness. But that's just not the case. If you read the Bible, um, <clears throat> I, I think it was Carl Sagan you can tell me if I'm wrong, said the, the road to atheism is littered with Bibles that have been read from cover to cover. And in my experience, when I was researching God and religion, I noticed that the atheists did know the Bible much better yeah. than the Christians did. Mm -hmm. And if you read the Bible with an open mind and an open heart and go where the evidence takes you, um, God is not good. And when I, I think, um, before Pioneer School, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to say this, though. I am saying things like this. This is honest. This is how I feel. Before you JW trolls uh, comment, because Ina's had some pretty horrible comments from, from Jehovah's Witnesses. From <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses. That, it was that, official. That want to, uh, <laughs> that want to uh, tell her how she's going to die in Armageddon and how she, they can't wait till Jehovah kills her. Um, is that really Christian? I mean, you know, when Jesus was actually being killed by the Roman soldiers, tortured and killed by the Roman soldiers, he pleaded to his God, do not judge them for they know not what they do. Right? The very first words of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, do not be judging for the measure that you are using. That measure shall be, shall be measured out to you okay so before jehovah's witnesses you start judging and tell us how we're going to die at armageddon and how you can't wait till we die at armageddon how you can't wait till jehovah kills us just remember is that really christian is that what jesus would have done anyway i want to get that out of the way yeah i think our fabric of society like i said has changed and um yeah i i look at there's a there's a gentleman um, here and he explained he's homeless. I won't say a name if you, I don't want to say anything that would overstep boundaries. <laughs> I've done that already. Um, and he, you know, I, I think for society right now, we have a lot of homeless people. There's a channel called the invisible people. I want to say that invisible people. And there's a lot of homeless and uh, society in general. And we're a Christian society here in America. And yet there are people here that are in, in absolute object poverty here in America because they aren't taken care of. And um, Jesus was always encouraging people to take care of the, the most lowly of society. And unfortunately, as a Christian nation, that hasn't happened in a lot of ways uh things because of religion you know uh, you can look and see it and you won't do anything about it because you think god is going to take care of it instead of hey let's get together and get these people out of the streets or off the streets and jehovah's witnesses will leave harsh comments 
at the bottom and follow me and say, you know, you're going to die. But they do the same thing for people who are already in very sore straits in life. And, oh, you're not, you're not a good person because you did this or you're on drugs or whatever. And one of the reasons why I like Dr. Mate is he explains, you know, there's trauma. And when there's trauma in families, you can't expect people to just get better like that. You're not going to have that. Trauma is trauma and uh, you get, you have to, you have to learn how to treat somebody that has been under trauma. A lot of these people are vets. Um, come, they've come from Afghanistan. They've, they've worked very hard for their country. They've killed a lot of people. So they come back into society and they don't know how to, they don't know how to live in society. Uh, they're used to being on top of things and worrying about you know what's going to happen next what's going to happen next so our fabric of society has changed and unfortunately to me religion has only allowed for us to continue to be abusive without taking uh, responsibility and saying hey let's help our fellow man they for jehovah's witnesses they won't help you if you don't if you're not one of jehovah's witnesses and something certain people say well yes we'll help our neighbors right but when it really comes down to long-term help they are not going to help a worldly neighbor that's down the street they will help their own and they have a hard time with that too so i think the whole fabric of our society has just kind of been disingenuous to individuals that uh need need the need to be cared for and I, I like Dr. Mate. So he's also on YouTube. You could just look up Dr. Mate. He explains trauma. He explains the importance of looking at how people in trauma shouldn't be, should not be um, judged. And <clears throat> the importance of waiting for them to get to a certain point now uh, to, to help them to get better. And I like that he doesn't see alcoholism as a disease because I always thought, oh my God, I'm diseased. So not only did I have uh, Jehovah's Witnesses that would say- She's oh, not an alcoholic. No, I'm not, but um, I can't drink. Uh, um, that, you know, if you leave the organization, then you, you are, you're mentally diseased but then you get out of the organization and you become diseased anyway, because that was hard for me. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm such a mess. Um, so I needed to think differently. I, Dr. Mate was very crucial to that thought process of changing it into a disease, into a trauma. And individuals, take it takes time for them to get over the trauma and sometimes it will always be there. It will just always linger is never going to go away, but you can help your body to understand what it's going through, feel like physically doing something to it while you're having an anxiety attack to get your brain to change its frequency so you don't feel all that anxiety. And I'm still going through that because now I've recognized that I have been <laughs> lied to about God. So, you know, you do more research and you follow it to where it's going and you realize, oh my gosh, we've been lied to by our religious leaders. And at least they could have said, hey, you know, and if you sit down and you listen to real religious leaders debate, they kind of go around and around and around and they never really answer the question. So yeah. I wish more authorities, more psychologists, more um, psychologists would just call them out and say, you know what, this is not a good thing for someone who has mental illness. I just, I wish more people would have said in, uh, in authority, but they don't want to step on somebody else's foot and be judgmental, right? But Plus religion still has a grip on mankind. Kind, yeah. So I really wish I could have heard that because I, I say it. I feel that religion only manipulates somebody who is already in a fragile state of mind and could cause the mental illness to get worse instead of trying to help the person to get better and finding other ways to do it through science through science yeah this has been a long video yeah and i'm probably going to cut it up because it's long and i don't want to
I know. And you may not agree, and that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. You don't, I don't want you to feel pressured. I, I think there's a lot of good people that are Jehovah's Witnesses. I think there are a lot of good people in, in religion. But if you want to believe something, you should be given all the avenues of information. And then you sit back. And if and there's a lot of good groups that are not Jehovah's Witnesses, that are religious people, that would never do what Jehovah's Witnesses do. And if you find your tribe in that group, I'll, I just, great. I think that is wonderful. Because you need a group of people that love you. And to, that is what is the mainstay of how you will get better, is if you have people that will love you in the process. And that doesn't happen for Jehovah's Witnesses. Most important thing, though. That leave. Be intellectually honest with yourself. I wanted to believe in God for years after I left. <clears throat> and I tried. And I researched uh, history of religion. I researched the history of God. And the more I read, the more I just thought, oh, I see. Okay. Well, that's, that's not right. But I was, inter I was intellectually honest with myself, even though emotionally I didn't want to let go. But you just have to. You just have to. Um, we, live, we live in an age of information. Um, do yourself a favor, be intellectually honest with yourself. Don't use emotion as your guide. Go where the evidence takes you. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. Um, but we do live in a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, people are good. Yeah. And religion will tell you for the most part, people are bad. And that's not correct. No. If you do the math, if religion was right, we'd all be dead. Mm. But just recognize the people that open the door for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the people that um, <clears throat> are kind to you. Say good morning. How are you? All of these little things. People are innately good. And it's a good world that we live. And we're very fortunate to live here. Yeah. Start off with a good attitude every day. Be grateful. Be grateful. Gratefulness. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So. We um, just tried the new Starbucks. <clears throat> we don't get anything from this, but we tried the new <laughs> uh, Starbucks brown sugar oat milk. Brown vegan. sugar oat milk. Yeah. It's so good. If you can find it, we went to Starbucks earlier and. I think it's popular. So it was sold out. Starbucks are out of it. But. So fortunately, I hope you like this because this is a lot quieter than mm. it was. And hopefully we make sense. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, let us know. And if you have any, um, uh, if you can see where we could maybe tell you something we didn't tell you before. Or it's hard to go back 20 years and then kind of remember everything as we're going back. And we're try I'm trying to do it, and I don't do it with a script. Um, I don't like scripts, probably because I've seen them all my life. Uh, outlines, 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 outlines. And I don't want an outline. I don't want an outline. I don't want anybody telling me this is how I want to do it. Uh, we put notes down from time to time about how I want to say things. But other than that, try the, what is it? <clears throat> Brown sugar oat milk. Brown sugar oat milk. It's good. It's good. Anyway, thank you, people. For yes, thank you for spending time spending with us. Spending time with us. And thank you for your comments for the most part. Yes. We're getting some really nice comments. Yeah. So just hang in there, everybody. Hang and in if, there. If we can help, wonderful. Yeah, and for all the wonderful people that have put thoughts and their love and their comments. Thank you. We have it a, helps me. <laughs> we it have an email. Me. Put the email on this. Okay. Email notagoodjw at gmail.com. So, if you have any comments you want to put yeah, there, put them there. If you want to have it private, I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. And, you know, if you, if you want just Jason to, you know, read it, just just put for Jason. And I won't read it. And, you know, I don't think likewise. You're do that. Likewise. But, you know, anyway. sometimes you just want something private. Man to man. I get it. It's all right. 
And the same with women, you know, maybe you don't want my husband listening or, you know, looking at the information. That's fine. I get it. I understand. All so, right, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Have a great, have a great Sunday. Enjoy it. Don't forget it. to like and subscribe. Like, and, yeah, like, 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 and subscribe. <laughs> Follow your bliss. And be, be good, good humans. humans.